morning lovely peoples uh, I hope you're well uh, it's a bit damper today <laughs> than it was yesterday some interesting thorns and amazing lightning and thunder uh, last night but hopefully it wasn't too heavy and has not caused people much harm but I think the plants uh, well and truly got watered anyway we're not here to talk about that we're here uh, to talk about animals in the Bible. And I want to talk to you uh, today about the first animal mentioned in the Bible. We read the following in John chapter 3 and verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. So then, snakes, not everybody's uh, favourite animal, but yes, one of uh, God's creations that's mentioned in the Bible. In fact, it slithers its way from virtually the first to the last pages uh, of God's word. So what do the scientists uh, tell us about snakes then? Did you know that there are more than 3,000 species of snake on the planet? And they're found everywhere, except in Antarctica, Iceland, Ireland, Greenland, and surprisingly, New Zealand. So that's the place to go if you want to escape the snake. <laughs> About 600 species of venomous and that's uh, and only about 200 of them which is about seven percent are able to kill or significantly wound a human non-venomous snakes which range from harmless garter snakes to the not so harmless uh, python dispatch their victims by swallowing them alive or constricting them to death, whether they kill by striking uh, with venom or squeezing. Nearly all snakes eat their food whole in sometimes astoundingly uh, large portions. Almost all snakes are covered in scales and as reptiles, uh, they're cold-blooded and they must regulate their body temperature <laughs> externally scales on their bodies serve several purposes they trap moisture in arid climates and reduce friction as the snake moves <sighs> there have been several species of snakes discovered that are mostly scaleless but even those have scales on their bellies to help them move and here's a fact to make those ophidophobes squirm that's a posh word for those who fear snakes and apparently 39 people out of 100 are afraid of snakes so the survey tells us well this will make them feel uneasy five of those species can fly most snakes live on land but there are about 70 species of snake that live in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. And sea snakes, as they're called, and their cousins, which are known as crates, are some of the most venomous snakes that exist. But they pose little threat to humans because they're quite shy, gentle, and their fangs are too short <laughs> to do much damage. But we fear snakes, don't we? It's interesting, somebody did a study uh, and they found that even in places where they didn't uh, have snakes, they found people who were afraid of them. I wonder if some of that goes back to the Bible, goes back to the book of Genesis where we first come across the serpent, a magnificent beast that was intriguing 
uh, to behold, to look at. He was cunning. He spoke. There's an interesting thing. An animal that speaks. Maybe we'll look at that in another talk later this week. But without recounting the story, you've heard the saying, once bitten, twice shy. When in the case of Adam and Eve, once smitten, both die. You see, woven throughout scripture is the greatest message ever told. The story of redemption. And the serpent, amazingly, as we go through the Bible, is associated with this grand event. In Genesis, the fall, it's the temptation of the snake that brings sin into the world and causes man to be separate from God. What did they do? In essence, they chose their way to be a better way than God's way. Has God truly said? The serpent uttered. And so they were deceived. And a life of pain and misery and sin came into the world. And man was separated from God. <laughs> we get into the book of Exodus and these serpents... Uh, come to prominence again. It's interesting that when uh, Moses goes before Pharaoh, what does God tell him to do with his rod? He says, throw it down and it becomes a serpent. It's interesting. I wonder what that was. Was the association, the fear? I don't know. But it was truly miraculous. And yet Pharaoh's heart was heartened when he saw the snake and... He ignored that miracle. Later on, the children of Israel are walking through the wilderness. They're by the Red Sea, which God had miraculously uh, brought them through. And they moan. They moan. Why have you brought us into the desert to die? And they go seeking after other gods, their own way, despite that great redemption that God had performed by bringing them out of Egypt into a land flowing uh, with milk and honey, with newness of life. Why have you brought us out here to die? And so as a punishment, God sends upon them fiery serpents and the people are bitten and they die. But again, as swift as these judgments were in Genesis and in Exodus, so the goodness of our God is revealed as redemption is promised with uh, equal eagerness and zeal. When Adam and Eve fall in the garden through the temptation of the serpent, God promises a seed. He promises someone will come to their rescue in Egypt, uh, in the wilderness, Likewise, God tells Moses to take that rod that turned into a serpent and fashion a bronze serpent and put it upon it. So if the people would look at it, they would live, look and live, was the message. And so that's the message of the gospel and the good news today. We can equally find favour with God. We can find forgiveness for sins, how? For a look, for a look at what? For a look at Jesus, the crucified one. Moses said to those people in Egypt, uh, those Israelites in the wilderness, with the bronze serpent upon the pole, look and live. Pilate says, as Jesus was led to the cross, behold the man, John the Baptist said, as Jesus came to be baptised and begin that ministry that would lead to Calvary by saying, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You see, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so was the Son of Man, so was Jesus lifted up that whosoever believes on him should have 
everlasting life. Enjoy your day. I hope you don't come across a snake. <laughs> We've only got three species in the UK, grass snakes, adders and slow worms. You're not likely to see one, but I'm sure you're, you're more than likely to be safe. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, bless us this day. Be with us, be our strength, be our encouragement. Help us to look to you where the greatest miracle in this world has ever taken place, the offer of salvation. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for your resurrection. We thank you that our hope is found in you. We thank you that you have defeated that serpent, that dragon, that devil, that Satan of old in your victory on the cross, that those who believe in you might have life and life eternal. Lord, keep us safe this day and our loved ones protect us uh, from this virus and help us to look to you because we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.